All right. I see a position coming up here that is sorely, sorely needed. Michael McLaughlin, offensive tackle. You could use some guys up front that uh, get the job done. 25th rated in the country. And uh, he's the top 335 player uh, nationally, top 50-ish player in the Sunshine State. Give me his measurables again, Mark. He's at um, 6'7", 290 out of Pompano Beach, Florida. Mark, when he committed to the Kings, do you know how much he weighed? 255? He was 6'8", 6'7", 6'8". Yep. 240. Wow. That was his build <laughs> size. Yeah. When you looked at him, he looked like just a tall tight end, you know, kind of like Eric Winston type of thing. Where uh -huh. like, oh, okay. We, we, these are the type of players we want to bring in, you know, not the big pudgy people where we got to reshape your body. Let's bring in somebody who's a little slender, give him more time, give him that shit condition, nutrition, and they'll blow up, you know, balloon. He did it himself. Him and his father dedicated the quarantine to the weight room. To the point where when he showed back up for camp, his own high school coaches were like, "Are we gonna are we gonna have to forfeit games? Cause you are you on some stuff, man? Like what's going on?" <laughs> he showed up to camp at like two eighty five, and they were mind blown. What I'm hoping when it comes to McLaughlin, man, I'm hoping we can throw on a red shirt on players is kind of overrated nowadays. But unless your team is just so really good, what I'm hoping is. We give him some time before we have to throw him out there. We don't want to have to Zion Nelson to play the young man at all. Unless he just walks in and he's just the absolute best right or left tackle we have, I want to be able to hold him off for at least one mango season. 2022 is when I want to start hearing or seeing uh, McLaughlin on the field. But he's an early enrollee. Like, I think people don't understand how beautiful it is to get an early enrollee and how it's tough because your scholarship numbers. I mean, if, if every coach could just have a hundred players, but 30 of them be players who can't play, but they can practice with you. And as soon as they sign in December, they enroll in January and all 30 of them roll in. Every coach was signed up for that. Heck yeah. But it's not like that. Okay. You got rollover. You have players who transfer out. You have players who graduate and move on with their life. You have players who try to enter the national football league. It's a lot of stuff that kind of goes on with, with the scholarship count. And uh, to be able to get another 10 in and at a position like offensive tackle, with a player who's already shown his dedication to the office, of, to the weight room, to his craft, to reshape his body, to be prepared to play in the fronts at this level, man, I love it. I love it. So wholesome one, obviously for a player who enrolls early, we know what uh, spring practice looks like. We, it's the 15 session. It's the spring game. It's the multiple um, game like scrimmages or near game like scrimmages, all of that. Uh, but for the early enrollee starting now, up until the time we get to spring practice, can you give us a feel for what they're benefiting from is it anything in addition to weight room, conditioning, all of that? Okay. Without giving away what I've seen personally, there's nothing like being able to get young men, 17, 18, maybe 19, to kind of get a head start as to the, the mental of the game and how much you can really wear down on your body mentally and physically to go through that at five, six o'clock in the morning, then have to go through the day as a regular student, then come back and do it all over again in the evening. It can really wear down on you. I mean, of course, cause you got to split up. You only get 24 hours, Mark, and at least six of them, you need to be sleep. Okay. <laughs> to get to get the proper games all this time. You got to split up. Okay, so six of them away, six from 24 is 18. Last time I went to math class, it's been a while, right? So 18 hours, right? Now, if you spend the first two and a half of that with football, that brings you down to six. That's the morning, 16 hours, right? Then maybe two or three more of those, okay, for the evening practices, right? So that's down to 13 hours. Let's say 
you have spring courses most people take in order to be a full-time student and be on scholarship you need at least what mark 12. yeah okay 12 credits but every course is like an hour or so maybe hour 15. okay so if we're at 13 let's say you're taking four credits that are all three each you know three hour courses so that means 12. so that means you have class for four hours so now we're down to nine hours left <laughs> that includes sleep practice anything else left, right so you got downtime you have travel time you have now what happens when you have player-led stuff we haven't even gotten into position meetings we haven't even gotten into uh, um, defensive as a whole meetings or film sessions, okay? Then your girlfriend wants some time on the phone. Your mama want to know what's going on with you. Your dad want to know how practice is going. You got coaches who's calling you and texting you from high school asking you how the experience at a D1 institution, okay? The biggest thing is the time management for these young men and how can they respond to it and stay focused now all of that is mental and physical what about you time what about if you know let's say if you are a video gamer if you are a reader if you like to write your personal time how are you able to juggle all of those things and still be the player that these coaches gave a scholarship to and invested in you that's why i love early enrollment it's because these young men get a chance to see how it is preseason. So before you get a chance to go out and there's 30,000, 40, 50, 60, 70,000 people out there watching you do what you do, you'd be able to build a nice foundation. And of course, the running and lifting and football is something you've been doing for a while. But to have to do all of that and maintain the grades and maintain you as a person while putting in because yeah, of course if you just do what coach tells you to are you ever going to ascend probably not so what about your extra stuff what about the player-led runs what about the you know your position-led drills and lifting that's not a part of when you're supposed to lift with the team at 6 a.m okay so a lot of these young men need time to kind of push all that together and let it get rolling and if you can get a semester early in on that type of thinking create a foundation create a schedule you know get with what you want to do and who you want to be for the next three years if you can get a jump start on that it'll really help them as as not only as football players or future nfl draft prospects but men to be able to create a foundation for who and what you want to be